All right, so this is just a little walk through Energy 3D. Once you download it and open the program, you're going to see this blank screen with a guy standing in the middle of a big gray slab. So part of the first aspect of this lab is just to understand the interface and see where it collects the data and how we can use the data. So this is going to be a two-part lab. So the first part is just going to be exploration. And so what we're going to do first is, as opposed to building a house, we'll do that next, is I want to go up and look at some examples. And so if you click on examples, you'll see there's a whole series of different types of houses that you can utilize. Complex buildings, you can do famous buildings, you can do the White House, Apple headquarters, uh, you can do campuses things like that. You also can pick out different types of um, solar panels that you're going to put on your house and then there's all sorts of kind of random models that they have built into the house. Unfortunately you can't upload a Google SketchUp file as there are 3D models for some of Boston College's buildings um, but it doesn't look like that you can upload those into this program and modify those because that would have been much more fun to be able to do. So what we're going to do is we're just going to mess around with one. I'm just going to grab a building, and it doesn't matter which one. I'm going to grab, a, let's say, a Cape Cod building. So you get a building, and over here it will say information if there is any. So it will talk about the type of house, and then sometimes you might have extra stuff about the building in these sheets, but not always. Right? So the, you're the only one that has the sheet is uh, the sheet number one. Now a couple of things to pay attention to is down in the bottom right you've got a compass and so you can rotate your building so you can orient it in a direction that makes sense to you. So um, I'm gonna have south facing me because usually what you want is you want a building that has a south facing roof because again in, at least in Boston the sun is always in the southern part of the sky. It gives us an illusion that it's overhead, but it never is. It's always south of us. And in the top, you can pick out the time of year, the day, you know, what temperature it might be, sunshine, and then you can pick different areas of the world. So eventually what we're going to do is we're going to build a house and we're going to transport it to different spots on the planet and see how that, uh, how our energy use changes or doesn't change depending on where we are. <clears throat> Okay, so now let's look at some of the functions that we can have. So let's click on this roof. Okay? So when you click on any object within Energy 3D, the panel over here on the right is going to change. And so it's going to tell you roughly how big it is, how tall it is, and things like that. It's telling us information about the house. I've got 10 windows in my house. I've got four walls things like that. Right now I have no solar panels. Okay? And then um, if I click on my cost tab, it's going to show me roughly how much this house costs. So this is $159,000 for its materials and it breaks it roughly down into how much that it costs. You can also change the thermostat value <laughs> if you uh, want to, you know, so how hot and cool do you want to keep your house because yeah, that's going to matter on your energy use eventually. And it does, um, we'll eventually show you the energy use and we'll talk about that here in a second. So these are going to be our three tabs that we're going to use a lot. Now there's a couple of other things here. Now notice when I clicked on my wall, okay, it told me the size of the wall. It also told me this R value. And R value is a measure of insulation, right? So if you go to a hardware store and you buy, you know, that pink, pink panther insulation, it'll have different R values. The larger the R value means it's more resistant to heat flow, right? And so low R values means the heat will flow easily through it. Uh, large R values means that it won't. Okay? Windows are particularly bad for heat flow. And we'll see where we can actually see the heat flow in and out of this house here in the next video. Um, so we can adjust that when we build our own house. Okay. So that's kind of the panel over here on the right. So every time I click on something, it's going to tell me information about it. So I can click on my door, right? I get a value for the door. 
Um, doors, same idea. They have a U value instead of an R value because it measures the whole thermal resistivity of the door. You can click on the window. It's going to show you exactly the same thing. Again, the higher the U value, the better resistance it is. So this is the difference between kind of a single pane that you see a lot around Boston College, particularly in the old buildings. Uh, probably most everyone's houses nowadays and most buildings have at least double pane windows because that air gap is a good um, thermal resistor. Stagnant air is actually pretty good at uh, preventing heat flow. Sometimes you have triple pane windows and again the more insulation value that you have the more cost is associated with that which is not surprising. All right, now let's go for a couple of other things and then we'll start up a new video here shortly. One of our big things that we're going to mess around with here is our solar panels. So we can go in and we can pick a whole solar panel rack or a single solar panel. So when you click on that, you can drag it down a solar panel. And when you click on it, it's going to tell you roughly how much it is. You know, it's going to tell you the efficiency. It's 18 Point three. Now if I click back on my costs and I click show, I now have a solar panel cost added to my house. Okay. And so I can um, cut and paste these if I want to. Oops. Um, and I'm going to add more solar panels. I'm just going to randomly put them on here. So and you can grab them and you can move them around if you want to and line them up because you kind of you can depend on how much your cost is that you have and notice that when it turns red um, it won't let you place them so I'm going to place a couple more let's put, let's put one up here by the chimney um, and let's put another one over here Oops and put one there and you can also add individual solar panels right because eventually you're going to run out of room on a roof for lots of them okay? you can also um, eventually if you have a flat roof and things like that you can put a solar water heater on top of them and you can even build solar arrays and so you can put in little mirrors just like what we saw in class, those big massive solar arrays and you can build, if you have a large enough yard or you can build a little solar farm outside. So now if I go back to my energy, now notice when I click on show it doesn't show me anything. So here's one of the tricks that you're going to use throughout in manipulating this program. If you right click on the building, okay, and I am going to go through and click daily energy analysis and what it's going to do is it's going to show me on May 1st what my energy use is going to be so this is again kilowatt hours per energy then I click run and it's going to go through and calculate it out okay. and so um, I'm generating solar and my heat gain is pretty good this means that I am generating more solar energy than I am using in terms of energy, which is not too bad. So, here is my ideal uh, kind of energy analysis. Okay, whoops, let's go through this. <clears throat> ah, boom. All right, so up at the top we have um, different buttons up here that kind of controls, kind of think of it as the weather and you can see where the sun goes. Okay. So I've got my date again here, May 1st, and we can pick any date that we want. If you click on this energy light bulb thing and notice it's got a little tiny calculator there I'm gonna click on that it's gonna run down here and it's gonna do a calculation and I'm gonna double click on this energy map over here all right and so this is one of the things that we're going to look at in terms of trying to figure out whether our house is pretty good and whether it's reasonably cost-effective so this green 
dot shows me my solar panels in terms of how much energy they are generating and not surprisingly notice at nighttime zero and then they run up during the day and you get a peak at about noon and that's where the sun is highest in the sky so this makes a lot of sense that that's going to be your energy generation now also notice at night I'm using power right so my solar panels aren't actually helping me much not surprising but notice during the day is that my solar panels are actually being quite useful because I now um, generating, you know, I might need to heat my house a little bit depending on what the temperature it is outside. But notice my energy gain is my solar panels are generating more energy than I need, and so that's what this purple line is showing. All right, so I should be able to save money in this regard. Okay, let's close this. Do you want to keep? So if you want to keep it, you can you can save it and what I would do for most parts of this lab is we can do screenshots so depending on what computer that you're on you can do a print screen or on an apple it's a sequence of commands um, that you'll have to use. I have to look it up since I don't use apples very much I'm not as comfortable or familiar with using them so I'm gonna just say no for right now. <clears throat> so here's my house and I can move around. Oops, I didn't mean to move my window. All right. Now there's also a few other things that you can do that will impact your energy use in our house. So I'm going to go up here and you can put, put in plants. And so again, if you're in the summertime, you probably don't want a house that has a big tree in front of it, right? It, um, if you want to generate solar panels. Okay. But it will also help to cool your house in the summertime so that there's some trade-offs that you have to worry about when you're planting a house. I'm just going to drop my tree there. Okay. Um, hey, adding in humans are kind of cool. So you, I'm just going to put a couple of humans inside of my house, inside of there. Okay. And then you can scroll in and you can zoom inside of your house on um, what's inside. It's a little tricky. <laughs> um, oops, I zoomed back out too far. All right, so I can see them through the window there. Uh, all right, and I keep moving my windows. Okay, so, and those are the kind of the basic features. And so what we are going to do is a, kind of the first part of the lab is we're going to go in and you guys are going to pick a building and you're going to decide on what kind of building that you want to uh, manipulate. And you're just going to kind of get used to it and understand how to generate energy. And you can do some editing. Um, so like if I wanted to grab a colonial building, do I want to save it? You're going to get a new house. Okay. So these are actually fairly popular house structures throughout the, uh, New England. You see these all over the place. And so same thing. It, when I click on it, it's going to tell me information about my house, about the roof. Um, let's go back to basics. All right. No solar panels, four walls, things like that. Um, see um, you can also do an annual energy this takes a little bit more time to run and you'll see down here in the bottom right that it's running okay now why this was also useful is I'm just gonna move this out of the way see these arrows these are arrows that's showing where we're mostly losing heat okay. I'm going to close this for right now. Ah, 